Hey, thanks for joining me. Um, at the desk now, I've got to do some stuff with the uh, the mouse. The smart board's not sensitive enough for this. So the uh, we're starting a different topic. It's not as different as it seems, not as scary as it seems. Uh, it's on projectiles, which are things that both move vertically and horizontally. And so uh, I've also asked you on the Google Classroom, if I can find my browser, there we go, um, to read these, just these two pages in the white book, uh, the white textbook. I think it's well better written than the maroon textbook, um, you can, if you want to see how those pages look. But I, I sometimes worry that I don't make you read the book enough. Some of the symbols they use can be a little bit throwing off, but so focus on the concepts that they're describing on these two pages, because we have to get you know, you have to understand this stuff. I have tended not to assign too much reading in this book because it, the symbology is a little bit different than the reference table, which is true of most textbooks, unfortunately. So in any case, back to what I want to talk to you about here. Um, a projectile, sorry, wrong file. A projectile is something that uh, gets thrown both up, down, as well as sideways. And so gravity, what's tricky about it is gravity is only a vertical entity. Gravity doesn't act sideways. And so we separate the horizontal and vertical values when we're figuring things out. And sometimes you might hear me say this for harder problems. Make a little T-chart where you, you have horizontal stuff on one side, vertical stuff on another. Um, the thing that's surprising is horizontal values do not affect vertical answers. So if you look at this little old snapshot of this cannon, if you were to take a cannonball and just drop it, it actually takes the same amount of time to hit the ground as if you launch the cannonball horizontally, which can be hard to believe. Um, we ignore air resistance for these because air resistance, as I've said earlier in the year, is pretty complicated. So this is this slide is not a big deal. Um, it's I just want you to know that you've had a lot of experience with projectiles. Um, a baseball is a projectile. Uh, when a bullet comes out of a gun, it's a projectile. This is sort of a throwback to there's an old mo movie with Keanu, Keanu Reeves uh, called Speed, where the bus drives off of a so old. I should have I should have gotten a moving airplane. This is also bizarre. You know, an airplane if it didn't have its wings, right, it would be a projectile. Even if you're a, a track runner and you're say um, doing hurdles or something like that, once your foot leaves the ground, you are a projectile until your foot's back on the ground. So um, it's stuff that you've you've kind of uh, have some experience with. So before I get into this, I actually wanted to show you with this animation here. I'm just going to close that. Um, and let me just clean this off. I will include the link to this. It actually has a lot of layers to it, so you can just play around with it. But um, as you can see, there's a fair amount going on. This is an animation where I've got a cannon that I can adjust the height of it. I can also adjust that angle. I want to do a horizontal launch. I don't know why that guy is there. It's sort of weird. I, I'm going to use this to measure the time. And I can adjust the initial speed of the cannon. If I just say, let's say we do 10, OK? And I fire it, right? There's this animation. So I just hold this on here. And if I find when it hits the ground, that's 1.75 seconds, right? And the range is the horizontal distance from this point that it started at to where it got. Uh, and you can see there's a little game here where we could try to hit the target. I'm not really looking to hit the target. Um, so uh, what I want to do is change the speed and see if it affects the time it takes to hit the ground. So let's just do something simple like double it to 20. Okay, and I'm going to fire it again. Oh, it went too far. See, this is where you don't. I don't have a lesson plan. I, c I can't drag that over. So I'm actually going to cut it in half. From 10, I'm going to go to 5. Because I won't be able to drag the cursor over that. Okay, there we go. So half of what we did initially. And so it doesn't go f as far. I hope that makes sense. I'm going to put this right here. See how the time is the same? So that initial speed, because it's horizontal, has nothing to do with the amount of time it takes to travel this vertical distance. It does affect how far away it lands, right, horizontally, but it because we're not changing this vertical distance, the height, it's really the same. If I drop this all the way to zero, the cannonball is going to stupidly just fall right from this little plus sign. Fire. And we're going to drag this little thing over, and it's the same time. 
So, uh, you know, the one little thing I have to say about this is if you were to do an experiment in an airplane that's not flying, the airplane's just on the ground, and you dropped, say, a ball uh, while you were sitting in a seat in an airplane, it's going to take a certain amount of time to hit the ground. When the airplane's flying at a steady speed up in the air, and you drop the ball, do the same experiment, it's going to take the same amount of time. And really, the ball's moving sideways. You don't really see it moving sideways because you're moving sideways with it. But the moving sideways doesn't affect the time it takes to fall a vertical distance, right? So that's what you want to try to you know get your head around. Um, so I'm going to pause this video because I think I want to get at the smart board. Nope, I'm over here now. So I can teleport. So um, I just wanted to go through, you know, the logistics of this a little bit more carefully than the first part of the video. So if we're going to drop the ball, I'm pretty good at that. I, I get told, like, you drop the ball, yo. Um, but if we're going to drop the ball, this is just like the problems from about a month ago where we were using this reference table equation. D equals VIT plus one half AT squared. That should seem familiar, I hope. And we're looking at things vertically. When we drop the ball, the initial velocity is equal to zero. What we're going to be doing is paying attention to the vertical, right? So I'll be adding subscripts sometimes when I'm going over a problem just to say, like, hey, we're not looking at the at this part of the velocity. We want to use uh, our 9.81 in there, right? So, um, you know, when you get to do the problems, that's coming, right? I'm explaining the background of this. I'm going to show you a sample problem, then you've got to try a problem. And they work pretty much the same as this. Um, this part is not different, so there's not really new equations in this on this stuff there it's like we're looking at the equations using them a little bit more specifically specifically so you know the vertical distance it falls 78.4 that's that's in the given here is going to get slapped in there just like it did back then and we drop the ball so the initial velocity is zero um, and that whole term goes away just like it used to and we look to find the time that's the unknown right so when we get down to the math part of it if this was a test, I'd say substitute values with units. So that drops out, so we don't have to write that. And then 1 half 9.81 meters per second squared, t squared, right? So there's the substitution of values. And now I'm going to multiply both sides by 2, right, to get rid of that half. And I'll divide both sides by 9.81. You could also have made the 9.81 4.905 and divided that by both sides. But anyway, um, and I don't... You know, I know what this comes out to, so I don't know why I'm torturing you with this. So I'm going to just pretend to hit this calculator. Um, it comes out to about 16. I have to take the square root of both sides to solve for t. And so I get uh, about four seconds that works out to. Okay? And that's something you've done before. And I'm hoping that you're remembering it pretty well. Uh, so when we go, and really this is conceptual here, so I'm not like doing a sample problem. I'm actually, you know, trying to explain the concept to you right now. When we launch something sideways, if, if I say how long does it take this projectile, now that I've thrown it sideways, we consider it like a real projectile, um, how long does it take to hit the ground? We do nothing different. The answer would come out to four seconds. So the 20 meters per second doesn't even go in to this equation. And this is what I was getting at. Sometimes you'll see me do this, where I add these subscripts. I'm trying to write a small red Y. And um, the 20 in that previous slide is an X thing. It doesn't go into that. Gravity does not act horizontally. That's the one way you can cheat on a test. If you drop your pencil, it's like, oh, it went down. Gravity only acts vertically, and so it doesn't affect the horizontal thing. So that's the biggest sort of issue with this. These problems is trying to keep it separate, where vertical and horizontal are separate. So uh, anyway, this while it's going vertical, it's going sideways. These are happening concurrently, as you know. And this traces out a, a, a parabola, a parabola, a parabolic arc. Here's you know here's the work that I, you just saw me do, right? I kind of sort of did, right? And so that's it laid out again. Uh, what I want to do is for each successive second. So I, you know, zero seconds, it's here, and then at one second, it doesn't fall very far. And so I, you know, rather than bore you with this, I took the liberty of doing this earlier, and I've got these equations shrunken down here. The distance that falls in one second is 4.9 meters, two seconds, 19.6. That's quadratically going up, and then 44.1, and then finally 78.4. Remember that these graphs were parabolic when something, when you wanted to say how far something fell when it had this constant acceleration, you get a parabola. Um, and so you see that the distance keeps increasing each successive second. 
um, we want to plot it now. So it's going 20 meters per second sideways. And you can see these light orange lines I've got in here. That's where we're going next is really plotting out that in one second it's here, two seconds it's here, three seconds is there, four seconds is there, while at the same time it's going down vertically. Right? And so when we put all that together, we get the whole big picture that it's gone down 4.9 meters, gone over 20, gone down a total of 19.6, right? Gone over another 20, etc. Right? You're getting it, I think. And so as time goes on, it's getting more vertically oriented. Um, I've got, and I didn't really clean this up very well, I've got my, um, if I just erase right in here and redraw them, I forgot to clean this page up. This this vertical velocity is pretty small. The horizontal velocity is pretty big. So the overall velocity, if I grab my black pen, looks something like that there. As time goes on, I'm just going to erase my scribbles that I forgot to erase before. Um, as time goes on, the vertical velocity increases, right? So it's twice as big here. And so the overall velocity is oriented more downward. And we're going to be able to figure out, you know, the vertical velocity by using this oldie but goodie. I hope this looks familiar. If it doesn't look familiar, you know, we've failed each other. <laughs> I failed you. Um, you haven't really failed me. You, you know, it's, it's, my, it's me. It's, it's, it's not you, it's me. <laughs> uh, okay, so that's a better looking picture. I forgot I had this neatened up version. So um, the, the worst case scenario if, is if I say, what's the magnitude of the velocity at three seconds? Then you have to be like, oh, horizontally, it's still going 20. Vertically, you find that number by using that equation I just slathered across the board before, right? Three times 9.81 gives you that value. Then you got to dial up your uncle Pythagoras and use a theorem. It's always nice to ask before you use a theorem. And then you would get the magnitude of the overall speed because it's it's both going down and sideways. Anyway, thanks for continuing to watch this. Let's take a look at this sample problem real quick. So this is the type of problem you have to actually be able to solve, that you're doing one that's like this. And if you get it, it's going to help you do it. If you're just mimicking what I do, you can kind of struggle through, but I worry about you remembering how to do it in the long run. Um, so try to think about it. You're smart. You can think about it. A student uses a slingshot to launch a rock horizontally off the tall cliff. It has a flat level field below it. The rock's launch speed is 56 meters per second. It's a pretty good slingshot. Um, and is launched perfectly horizontal. The launch is point is 41 meters vertical. So the picture pretty much shows what's going on. In summary, I like pictures. Um, so the initial vertical velocity, the vertical velocity, because it's launched horizontally, the initial vertical velocity, which I would abbreviate this way, is zero. And that's how you, you saw that happening before. We're going to use that d equals vit uh, plus one half at squared equation to find the time. And then once we have the time, we can go back and take that velocity that's horizontal and multiply it to find how far it went to get you know, this is what part C is asking for this distance, sometimes called the range. I used to have a home on the range. Oh, dear. Uh, and then for part D, we're finding this right as it's about to hit the ground. Um, when it's just hitting the ground, people always say, well, it hits the ground, velocity is zero, it hits the ground. Now I'm talking about the instant it's just starting to hit the ground. So we're not talking about the crash part. Um, so rather than bore you, with this, I think I'll put a PDF on Google Classroom so you can see this solution, and I'm just going to talk through it. That'll make this probably less painful for you. Let me move my rocker over here. All right. All right. Old enough to need a rocking chair. So this is just the same question where I've blown it out into um, uh, the solution. So I talked about this, initial, ver initial vertical velocity is zero. Uh, here's using this d equals vit equation. So look how the numbers slap into that. Here's the substitution. So that works out to 2.89 seconds. Okay. Now, this is something I haven't talked about as much. So since gravity does not act horizontally, we can say that the horizontal acceleration is zero. I like to point this out. You don't necessarily have to use this equation to do it. But I just like that once I use a subscript, you're like, oh, I'm going to put subscripts on everything. So, you know, I'm using the same equation. If that's zero, right, then that drops out. And it's just velocity times time because there's no acceleration horizontally. So I'm using that time that I got in part B. And so that's actually not that hard. It looks, I made it look more complicated than it is. And then finally for part D, we want to get the velocity components just as it's about to impact the ground. 
So the horizontal one doesn't change. And again, making something simple harder, I'm using this equation again um, on the horizontal side. So I'm looking over here where I'm putting these arrows and notice that there's no acceleration. So the final horizontal equals the initial, right? So you don't have to do that. If you just know that it stays constant and I ask you for what the horizontal velocity is later, you just tell me the number. Vertically, it's not as quite as simple. So here's, I was hoping you'd remember this equation. I'm adding my subscripts. I'm putting the negative on there just because we make down negative typically. So that indicates the downwardness of this. And like I had said, if I was to take this up another notch um, and say, well, let's make this even more difficult, I could do this where we find the overall magnitude of the velocity. So this red vector right here, um, I would use Pythagorean theorem to find that, right, where I would take the square root of the sum of the squares. Right, and that would give me that value. It wasn't really asked for in this case. Hey, you're a gem. You're still watching me. Thank you so much, and uh, and we'll see you soon. Take care.